Yo, Internet, what is happening? Welcome back, and we're here to discuss the uh, details and knowledge I've learned uh, not only after since buying the 2008 F-150 regular cab short box that we're eventually going to swap, but also what I've learned on the back end and what I'm going to need as far as like wiring harnesses and components to make it all happen. Now, yeah, we're not looking at the truck because it's outside in Arizona. It's about 95 degrees out or so today, probably pushing a hundy. Uh, we'll go take a quick look at it, but I wanted to kind of break down what's all going to be needed for the swap as far as I know and, um, and some other obstacles that I'm going to have to kind of jump over uh, because it's not a simple bolt-in like the, the Mustangs are. So let's get to it. Now, one of the first things I noticed was the PCM connector orientation. So as you notice, we got a little template here. I'll talk about that in a few seconds here, but this is a Coyote Gen 1 ECU. Um, Nate Hensley from Lethal Nate Wiring Performance was kind enough to send me this ECU and uh, deleted the pats so that we don't have to worry about that later. It's gonna be great to test on. And uh, even without an engine, I kind of want to hook up some things and see uh, how the gauges and whatnot interact. And what we have here is the uh, original 2004 to 2008 PCM bracket. Now you might be wondering why I have that template. Well, because on the 04 to 08 PCMs, they're not like the Mustangs where the three valve looks just like this. It's oriented like this. Um, the connector is actually on the side of the block. So it sits in the firewall like this, the firewall's in the back, and then the connectors are all oriented on the front. So and I came up, whipped up this little design quick to uh, orientate this all correctly. So that's gonna sit on the firewall and then let's print it's facing down and then this will bolt on to the bracket so that we can have it nice and low and have enough room for the connectors to the wires and stuff to get around to the top because usually on the coyote trucks they're sitting in there uh that's yeah, 180 oh. that it's sitting in there in the cab and it's all sealed with a gasket so i came up with a little bracket obviously it's in paper now so it looks like a good proof of concept so that's my first step in uh, making this swap easier so this is something that will come with uh, either separately or with our wiring harness you can add it on uh, once we get developed. So let's go outside and take a look at the truck and some of the things I've noticed out there. All right so here it is. It's actually not a work truck per se it's actually XLT we got the big 543 valve in there. Um, had a transmission issue, which we don't really totally care about, but um, I would like to get it running, or at least moving correctly without the shift solenoid code, you know, to sell the uh, drivetrain in, in good faith. So not bad, it's got a little over 200,000 miles on it. Uh, I do have plans for aesthetics, but that's later down the road. All right, you can tell brackets missing but as I was saying earlier how the PCM sits in there and the connectors are oriented like that and I'm not gonna about to cut into this not flat firewall the cab to um, put in the uh, PCM like the coyote I'm just gonna make that adapter it'll have it sitting out just as far like the 5.4 or the, or the OG I've come to call it because there's the force 2 the 4.6 and the 5.4 that came in these uh, so my buddy Jazz was over here the other day, and he actually has a 14 F-150 with the <laughs> with the five liter. I've only done that about 14 times since owning this truck, and noticed a few little different things, like the degas bottle is actually part of the stock air box. This is the air box on the 5.4, uh, the air box for the five liter, and all the other generation newer is sitting over there. The battery is a little further forward. The washer fluid tank is like back there. These attached to the cab and not the, by the fenders. A lot of little differences here, but I was looking at the harnesses of his truck and online. And I think keeping the stock battery location is going to be just fine as to where everything goes. There's another thing I noticed was that the like exterior fuse box of the Coyote trucks sit right here. And I was like, well, how am I going to feed, you know, the... This truck's entire fuse box is inside the truck. It just has a simple big gauge wire. No problem. There's going to be plenty of standoffs on the... Uh, new battery cables 
um, on the F-150 or the Coyote harnesses of the F-150. So similarly to the Mustang setup, I'm going to use the transmission harness and battery cables from the newer trucks and make it work. What was nice is Ford actually separated the electronic rack harnesses, which I want to see. And let me know if you guys know if I can put electronic rack in here. We screwed up and forgot to uh, see if the mounting points are the same. I was just looking online, the racks look similar, but I uh, haven't heard of anyone swapping electronic rack into the older trucks. So back to electronics. So we're going to use the, the battery cable harness from the Coyote because it comes with you know everything you see here but in the coyote version and uh, has an inline for the transmission harness or not the transmission harness but like the ac um, the starter and um, alternator and then there's a transmission harness that is basically just literally just the harness for the 6r80 stuff goes to the computer and then a, a smaller 12 pin inline that uh, is mostly used for transfer case things but there's one wire in there that we'll have to use to power up the o2 sensors and then another little roadblock is this uh, clutch fan. So I'm fairly certain since these are super simple brackets, we're going to throw in a 11 or a 10 to 14 um, radiator and radiator fans. And the swap harness will have all the relays and power feeds so that you can have electric fans in your truck right away. You don't have to worry about that because your computer from the Coyote is going to control it. And then we were poking around underneath here. So uh, you can't tell, but the cross member Yes, you can. <laughs> does bolt in and out. Now we took a, I just took a quick cross member measurement from Jazz's truck and this one, like the back of that cross member to this cross members uh, like center line. And there's a three inch difference. Now granted his was a extended cab, but that shouldn't matter in drivetrain things. But the good thing is, is that that cross member does unbolt. And if I got to come up with another product so that we can adapt the transmission mount of the 6R80 to the um, you know, older trucks, the 408s, so be it. So in the spirit of uh, not sweating like a you-know-what in church, going back in the AC, we can talk more about that 150 things. All right, so kind of cover the mechanics. Now, without getting that thing out and everything, you know modular engines share um, the same mounting points on the block as the Coyote. So I'm hoping... I can use the three valve mounts. Um, the one thing I heard on the internet was, I think it might've been for the 9703 trucks that the, uh, the mounts were different, but I'm hoping that we can make those work. Hopefully we can use the Coyote ones in the older frame. I touched on like what kind of cables we might need as far as um, like OEM stuff. So I'm hoping besides maybe the transmission cross member and the motor mounts and the electronic rack, the only aftermarket stuff you might need would be our um, swap harness and power by the hour AC bracket to adapt the modular AC compressor to the Coyote block. Cause you know, we love doing that. If you're doing a four, two, then you probably need to get one of those compressors. It's always usually my solution. So then you don't have to get custom lines, just get the four or the modular lines and, and go from there. So I'm going to try and remember to, all the things that I've discovered that I can break down that what you're going to need to do this swap for the mechanics. Um, looks like we're probably gonna do some cross member work, motor mount work and some power steering solutions. Now that's all kind of pending until I uh, pull the cab and do the, the swap with the frame off or take the drivetrain out of the frame and then um, go from there. So like I said, I'm really hoping I can swap an electric rack in here. Otherwise we're gonna have to do kind of a power by the hour solution, relocate the alternator and use the modular power steering pump and go from there. I'm sure you could wire up a, a a Volvo power steering pump or hydraulic pump and uh, plumb that in. Uh, might work for good for the, the truck application. I know drifting and stuff gets kind of warm and stuff, but that's also a, another good solution. So continuing on the mechanic side, um, whether you're two or four wheel drive, you're gonna need the drive shaft either custom or one out of an 11 to 14 truck. Uh, I was told by Christian at Power by the Hour that the 6R80 is actually shorter and that you can actually bolt your older transfer case onto the 6Rs and then use the 11 to 14 
drive shaft. So ours is two wheel drive. We won't be doing any four wheel drive stuff. So uh, right now I recommend getting a manual transfer case or you have to figure that out yourself. Um, this kind of touches on the mechanical stuff, but the radiator, you're gonna have to swap out. The, only because you're gonna wanna use the electric fans. There's no clutch fan for the Coyote that you can bolt on um, to reuse that shroud and stuff. And the 10 to 14, 2010s actually had electric fans and set up just like the Coyotes. And um, unless you have a 2010, which we'll get into later on the 09s and 10s, um, I'd get the 11 to, or 10 to 14 radiator and the fans so that it'll all work with our swap harness. So you have electric fans right out of the gate. So that's one mechanical thing. And then we're gonna have to worry about trans cooling since we are gonna do a 6R. People ask me if I'm gonna do a manual. No, nope. anyone that's doing a truck is gonna put in the 6R. And um, that's probably gonna be the most popular swap. So there's no point in having a manual transmission in F-150. It's just gonna get things messy. If you do, I do have solutions in my head but we don't need to get into that. So the radiator and the coolant lines, you're gonna have to figure out. The coolant lines, I'll get like at least the ones from the Coyote truck that go from the transmission up to the front of the, the, um, the motor. And then you can use whatever solution you want. You can use the rest of the OEM lines from 11 to 14, or they're not very high pressure, I've been told, um, and at least get those ends barbed or um, you know double hose clamp and do whatever you got to do so that you can either plumb it to the original trans cooler or get an 11 to 14 trans cooler because uh, it looks like on the Kyrie truck as far as um, online and was looking at my buddy Jazz's truck is that uh, the cooler doesn't go into the radiator like old school um, radiators do have like a, a place where the transmission cooler is built into the radiator and then this one actually is plumbed into the radiator and then plums out to an auxiliary cooler. Well, it covers the mechanic side of it. I'm going to need uh, 11 to 14 air box and you might as well just use that degas because it's all in one. Um, which brings me another thought. I wonder what, I've never looked at F-150 Coyote uh, cold air kits, like if they just leave the, the back, the, the bottom half of uh, the air box open when you get a cold air kit. I, anyway, I digress. I'll probably just use a stock one. There are probably millions of them out there. Now, as far as electronics, so obviously you're going to need 11 to 14 F-150 Coyote computer. Now, I haven't 100% verified that the gauges and stuff are going to work. I'm going to take a risk here. I kind of got, got a surprise I want to show you guys later on how I'm going to try and bet that out without fully swapping it. If you've been talking to me personally, then you know. If you don't know, you're going to have to find out uh, like everybody else and it'll be on YouTube first. So 11 to 14 PCM, you can use the battery cable harness for from the 11 to 14, the transmission harness from the 11 to 14. And if we can run an electric rack, the electronic rack um, harness as well. So they're all separate, used, available. Um, I haven't seen which ones are available new. Um, I, I think the transmission harnesses, uh, only a couple few versions of them because there's like four wheel drive, manual transfer case, electronic transfer case. All of them will work for my application because it's rear wheel drive and then you're just gonna omit, there's like a transfer case connector on the end of that transmission harness. So I can just leave that, uh, you know, hanging out. Um, so that's what you'll need for some OEM solutions is the battery cables, which covers your starter, alternator, AC and um, those connections. And then the transmission harness obviously goes to the transmission and then depending on the uh, electronic rack situation. The other thing you'll need is a 11 to 14. Actually, you need a 2009 to 14 pedal because like I said, I'll get into the 2009 and 2010 F-150s later, but from 09 to 14, the pedals are the same. And they're not the same as a, a Mustang one. They got different mount different style pedal, get the truck pedal. And then last but not least, you need our swap harness. Now our swap harness is gonna be a lot more involved as far as parts are concerned than the Mustang ones because we have to add like three different circuits to get those electronic fans working because the 04 to 2009 F-150s do not have an electric fan. They have an electronic clutch fan controller, which Coyote will not control. Don't care on making it get in control. So I'm like, easy solution is pop the radiator in, pop the electric fans in. We'll actually have all the plugs to plug in the fan, the relays and the fuses. So it's all, all good. It's going to be 
uh, very OEM plus like. I'm going to try my best to, you know, not like, make it look like an afterthought, but there will be some inline fuses. There'll be three extra fuses. You got two 40 amps for the fans, and then there's another 25 amp fuse for um, also for the fans. And that, in theory, should be all you need to swap these trucks. I'm really looking forward to making this thing like the third generation Lightning that Ford should have made. Obviously, it's going to be NA at first. I'm going to probably give it a 3.5 drop. Um, some some newer F-150 wheels, like from 18 to 20, those six spoke like gunmetal wheels look really good on those trucks. And uh, since it's white, I'm gonna touch it up, make it maybe put some better seats in it. But it's gonna be a nice little driver and a good test bed for you guys because there's like no information on how to swap these trucks. There's like um, I've been joining all the the Facebook groups as you do when you buy a vehicle that you've never had before, and already people are asking like, can I swap a 5.0? And there's like. No one's like, oh, looking on YouTube, there's one guy that has done it, but it was a lot of work. And I was like, how much work can it be? So luckily for me, Ford has, on the Mustangs, has let the cluster, the older cluster of the 05 to 10 Mustangs communicate with the PCM of the Coyote. And I'm hoping they did the same thing with the trucks. And luckily, uh, Nate was kind enough to send me a PCM so that I can uh, give that a whirl in the interim. And then even without doing the swap, there's something else I want to give a whirl so you have to find out for that so i think it's gonna wrap that video that's enough of me rambling on uh swapping in a 2004 to 2008 f-150 to a coyote so but before i let you go there's one point that i was talking about we haven't touched on the 2009 to 2010 f-150s now they're a special breed that's when i thought it was 2010 that they changed the body style like the trucks but in 2009 they went to the new body style of the 11 to 14s that you might be more familiar with. So 2009, 2010, oddly enough, share the same PCM orientation in the cab, so you won't need the adapter, and the pinouts of the computer, the body connector, are just about identical. So if you have one of these trucks, one person's already contacted me like months ago, and I told him, I haven't done my research, and he called me back out of the blue. I was like, here's what I found out. So the 2009 to 2010 trucks are going to be really easy. You won't be needing an elaborate harness like we're going to develop on these 2004 to 8 trucks. Um, the 09s, you are going to need that uh, added fan circuits because they still use electronic, electric fan clutch control, excuse me. Uh, but the 2010s, like I said earlier, have an electric fan, so it's already set up for that. So a couple of few, and the pedal, of course, is the same as the Coyote. So good news for you, 09 to 10 F-150 owners. So... We'll wrap it up there, and I'm um, really looking forward to chopping up this project. We've always got things going on here and make it modular like this, and um, I'm super pumped to, to do the trucks. I feel like there's a little more demand than maybe the Crown Vicks. Correct me if I'm wrong, leave it down in the comments, and uh, if you like this video, stay tuned and like it. Also, if you want to keep staying tuned, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.